The Red Pill community has within its resources various collections of the tales of men and their dealings with women. A common retort that I have heard in response to these types of tales is that these men were dealing with the wrong type of woman or that that woman wasn't a good woman. Personally, I'm not convinced. I have a different view. Before I get into that, however, I'll ask this question. Is there such thing as a good woman? It has been said that women love value and men value love. This statement isn't so much about love, but more so the dynamics between love and value. Males tend to love in an idealistic manner. Females, being a bit more pragmatic in this field, tend to love in an opportunistic manner. This isn't a good or a bad thing. To be honest, good and bad are container words we use to describe the world to children and any adult still needing to have their reality framed by such standards have more than likely missed the great deal of nuance in terms of their comprehension in life. Said differently, good and bad are poor metrics for framing our reality, and most of us are in serious need of some nuance. That being said, far too often, I hear the suggestion that men have poor dealings with women because they chose the wrong type of woman, or she wasn't a good woman. As I said, intrinsically, I don't believe there's any such thing as a good woman or a bad woman. What has always determined a good or a bad woman in the age of cultures and religion was the guidance of that culture or religion. In our current day and age, where those guidelines are being rejected and abandoned, such things cannot be determined and more to the point, are generally a judgment of someone else's actions and an attempt to justify personal opinions. This type of thinking, however, is not only judgmental, but short-sighted. Generally, a result of what is called the Madonna Whore Complex. Now, what is that exactly? The Madonna Whore Complex is not new and was coined by Sigmund Freud. Both males and females perpetuate the Madonna whore complex, but in different ways. Essentially, this complex divides women into two groups, good women and bad women. When a man or a woman tells you that you're dealing with the wrong kind of women, this is generally a play at the Madonna whore complex, mostly because it suggests that there are a correct type of women and an incorrect type of women. More often than not, coincidentally, the person will fall on whatever that correct side happens to be in terms of their descriptions. More often than not, when women invoke this complex, they do so in an attempt to indirectly suggest their own value over another woman and her actions without actually appearing to be judgmental. With females being emotion-centric, these accusations are not generally based in ration, nor do they take into account the consistent and predictable natures of women, and instead rely on stereotypical expectations that they believe men should value and the context in which that is appropriate to be valued. When men perpetuate the Madonna whore complex, it is usually based on our idealistic ideas of what a woman should be and what a woman should not be. And more often than not, does not take into account the general nature of women when left to their own devices. Nor does it take into account the guiding role that culture and religion played in this mechanism or the lack of those same guidelines in the present set of intersexual dynamics. We as males use this to substantiate our idealist and unrealistic expectations of women, regardless of where we picked up some of those aspects of our expectations. With the guidance of religion and cultures, we never had to take into account or even have knowledge of the nature of males or females. As a result, without those guidelines nor any instruction as to how either of those work, we are left to discover this knowledge for ourselves and on top of that, fashion our own plan of action forward. As I said earlier in the video, men have a tendency to love idealistically. 
women have a tendency to love opportunistically. Said differently, women love value and men value love. Please remember, when I'm saying this, this is not a bug in the system, it's a feature. This is exactly how it's supposed to work. This is how it's worked for the longest. We need to make sure men are put up on game and aren't simply choking on their own idealism. Women, being the more vulnerable of the two sexes, have evolutionarily needed to love by virtue of value provided. Otherwise, the risk of being left on their own could be a death sentence. For males, because we are built for solitude and a solitary self-sufficient lifestyle, our love has evolved from a pursuit of our own ideals of what can complement that existence. Once again, I'm not saying this because men and women should be a different way. I'm saying this because men need to be aware of how our nature works and how it differs from that of women so that we do not fall prey to our own shortcomings in being idealistic, nor do we succumb to being preyed upon for being naive about our own expectations about women. There is no such thing as a turnkey woman. Back when we were guided by cultures and religions, the women were raised to be turnkey women to the men who passed manhood rights that they were to be paired with. In this day and age, not only are women not raised to be an asset to a man, they not only both are encouraged to be, but also insist upon being independent of men and being valued for such. Regardless of the fact that what is implied by being independent is being alone. Or even more to the point, that the idea of this independence is in fact the appearance of such. If she needs to have her pipes in her home fix, she will most likely be calling a male. If she needs to have her car repaired, most likely she will be taking it to a male. If she wants to earn money from the high paying job she has, most likely she will be employed by a male. If she is in danger and has to call someone, whether it be the police or fire department, most likely she will be calling upon a male. It is not that women have become independent of men, as they would like to suggest. Rather, women have become independent of the personal connections to men that would have otherwise facilitated such resources. And instead, by pairing themselves with the state itself, can leverage the utility of males instead of any personal dependence. The women aside, in this day and age, if a male is to make it into any form of manhood, seeing as how we no longer have manhood rights to dictate such, he must rise to those heights of his own accord and based upon his own knowledge of such. Regardless of the fact that we are no longer given the parameters by which such a feat is undertaken. There is no such thing as a particular type of woman that is intrinsically good to be with. Simply because what is required to be with a man, more especially you, is not yet laid out for her in any form of a guide. If a woman is going to be an asset to you in your life, you will most certainly not only have to expect to come upon her in an untamed state, but you should expect to have to necessarily embark on the task of building her up to be that which will complement you and your lifestyle. There is no such thing as a good woman, unless of course, you make her good for you. You will not stumble upon some woman out there who just happens to get it. That's the kind of thing that females want. There are no turnkey women. And if you are seeking to have a woman in your life, you must understand that it is your task to build her up to be the woman that you want her to be for you. The task and the choice is yours. You are the one who needs to just get it, not her. And if this seems like too much work for you, you're probably better off alone or just paying for it.